start with. That's because television can be transmitted in three different ways. We'll need one to expand our existing terrestrial signals from the present five main channels to around 30, another to add the 200 or so satellite channels, and another for digital cable. And each box could cost up to 200 pounds a piece. But is there getting a stage where I can get a box that will do the whole lot? Um, I'm sure there will be. Uh, I'm sure there will be a point where the consumer effectively wants one box. I don't think anybody believes that the customer wants three different boxes in their home. I think that's kind of unrealistic. Hence, initially, it will probably start with add-on modules. But what you will buy is programming. You won't be looking for technology. If you wander into your local retail store, what will concern you is what do I get? What indeed? Well, assuming the manufacturers sort out the problem of the set-top boxes, the next question is, will digital be any better? I asked the digital television expert, Andy Trott, for his verdict. What's so great about digital television? Well, digital television gives the broadcaster many options on how to actually transmit the signal. We've got a picture here, and I think you'll agree that the, the quality is the first thing that, that stands out. It's very, very good quality. Now, is the quality always better on digital? No, the, the quality isn't going to be all, always the, the primary thing that the broadcaster wants to control. Um, I can give you an example of this, Formula One motor racing. Some broadcasters are thinking about having cameras in car with Michael Schumacher, with Damon Hill, with the top drivers. And you can choose which one you want to watch? That will enable you to choose, yes. Absolutely. By controlling it with the button there? Absolutely. Well, now, with all these programmes, we're going to need a radio times that's about 300 pages thick, aren't we? Any alternative to that? Well, there's a new way of choosing what you watch, and it's called an electronic programme guide. And it allows you to uh, pull up all the channels that are currently showing, um, you can step through them, and um, you can select any programme you want to, and very quickly, by the push of a button, go to that channel. Oh, Andy, we're certainly spoiled for choice. I must say, it's going to be one hell of a job. Quite a nightmare, making a choice of all that lot. Well, it just happens that some families here in Hull are having to make those choices right now, because they're all taking part in a trial of digital television, which they get through their telephone line right now. And this is a good example of the kind of service we may all get next year. Well, now, the first thing to ask you is, do you think the quality on this digital television is better than the normal? No. no. Um, not yet. Not, not, not yet. Better. No, no, not much not, difference in the picture much, quality? Not no. a great deal of difference yet, no. No. So if it's not quality, what do they like about digital TV? Got videos. Sport. Local newspaper. And music. Video on demand. Home banking. But very broadly, I mean, do you think digital television is going to appeal to user family when you have to pay for it? <laughs> Um, they might be a little bit different when we have to pay for it. Um, but yeah, we get a lot of use out of it. Worth it? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Especially when they're going to broaden it anyway, you know, put more films on and everything. Well, whether you decide to give it a whirl or wait and see how digital develops, the government plans to scrap existing analogue transmissions within the next ten years. So, like it or not, in the end, we're all going to have to go digital. Now, remember